Today's video links to my previous video about asthma. I will tell you a story of a patient with a life-threatening asthma attack and how I helped save his life. So first, I'll tell you a bit about the patient. It's a seven-year-old boy who we will call Oscar. Oscar has hay fever and takes over-the-counter tablets for this. He had eczema as a baby but is otherwise normally fit and well. His dad had eczema as a child and mum currently also suffers from hay fever. Oscar has had a cold, runny nose, temperature and a chesty cough for the last three days. He started having trouble with his breathing since yesterday and has been progressively getting worse. His parents arranged an appointment with their family doctor who noticed quite quickly that Oscar was unwell. He was breathing really quickly with intercostal recession which means his ribs if you look at them they were being drawn in and this happens when you're struggling to breathe. He was also displaying other signs like nasal flaring, tracheal tug and his oxygen saturations were only at 90% whereas normally we're happy with oxygen saturations equal to or above 94% in a healthy person. Oscar was very wheezy and hence finding it very hard to speak in full sentences. The doctor quickly recognised that this was a medical emergency and started Oscar on oxygen whilst he waited for an ambulance to arrive. The ambulance was taking too long so he took the decision to drive Oscar to accident and emergency or casualty himself with the consent of his parents. He was carrying Oscar on his arms whilst running into the accident and emergency department. Oscar was looking drowsy and limp. The emergency staff quickly recognised this and took him straight to recess, where the really unwell patients go. A paediatric crash call was put out because the patient was in a peri-arrest situation. A crash call is usually put out if a patient's heart or breathing stops, or in this case, if the heart or the breathing is about to stop. There are specific people carrying these bleeps called the crash bleeps and are part of the crash team. Every time a crash call is put out, the crash team is quickly informed and they know exactly where to go. On this day, I was part of the crash team. As soon as the crash bleep went off, we ran as fast as possible towards the accident and emergency department. We gowned up as quickly as possible. Whilst we were gowning up, we got a quick history or a background of the patient and the situation that he was in. We saw Oscar who was surrounded by other accident and emergency doctors and nurses. He looked absolutely frightened. His mum was next to him who was crying and obviously concerned. We noticed that the patient was already receiving oxygen. Despite this, he was still struggling to breathe. We quickly cannulated the patient, took some blood tests, ordered initial investigations to get a snapshot of how bad the situation is. Certain bedside tests can give us more information on how the body is coping. Oscar was given back-to-back -back nebulizers and intravenous steroids whilst he was very closely monitored. However, despite this, he wasn't making much progress. We quickly made the decision to escalate the treatment plan and involve the paediatric intensive care team as he would need to be intubated if he didn't respond to treatment. Oscar was moved to the intensive care unit where again he was very closely monitored and thankfully started to show some improvement. Over the next few days, Oscar made a great recovery. Once he was well enough, he was discharged back to the care of his community doctor. In this case, Oscar was suffering from a chest infection and newly diagnosed asthma. It's quite important to mention the seriousness of this situation. If Oscar had presented to his community doctor any later than he had, or if the doctor didn't take that brave decision of taking him to hospital himself, then he could have very easily died. The fact is that when asthma goes wrong, it can go wrong quickly. More than 1400 people died from asthma in 2018 and this number is only increasing year after year. Whilst Oscar was on the ward, his mum reported that he had a nighttime cough for most days of the week and this has been going on for a few months. However, did not seek any medical attention because didn't think it was too serious. Also, if you remember, I talked about the family history towards the beginning where dad had eczema as a child and mum and Oscar are currently suffering from hay fever. Now, there's an increased risk of asthma running in families if the parents suffered from asthma, eczema or hay fever. This trio is referred to as atopy. 
If there is a family history of atopy, the children are more likely to be affected by one of those three conditions. So in this case, the child presented late to his community doctor. He had some symptoms which would suggest that he was suffering from asthma. However, the parents may not have been aware of the symptoms, so did not seek further medical attention. Please refer to my previous video to learn all you need to know about asthma. That's it for today guys. If you have enjoyed the content then please consider subscribing to this channel so I can have your support and know that you are benefiting from the videos. Also like and share the video with your family and friends and hit the notification button if you would like to be notified every time I release a video. I am a full time doctor and my aim is to provide you with knowledge which can improve and sometimes even save lives. If you have any suggestions for future videos then please leave a comment below. All the best guys, look after yourselves, stay healthy and remember, knowledge saves lives.